We present to you a statement by the Deputy Premier, Minister for Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture, and Representative for the 7th District, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Whitley. Good morning, everyone. I recognize the protocol which has already been established uh, this morning. I don't want to get into recognizing anyone because then I'll have to recognize the youth um, premier, the youth parliamentarian premier, and the youth parliamentarian opposition member, and the protocol can get very long. So I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that uh, protocol as we move forward. But I just want to, first of all, give a very hearty congratulations to all the youth parliamentarians here. And I want to take this opportunity uh, to recognize, recognize Mrs. Brenda Tai Letsom. Perhaps you can uh, stand, Mrs. Tai Letsom, and give her a hearty round of applause. <laughs> Mrs. Tai was the officer in the Ministry of Education and Culture at the time responsible for the youth parliament, and she did an excellent job uh, with those young persons. And I also want to recognize any past members of that youth parliament. I know Brother Stoddard, Chesley Stoddard, was a part of that as well. I'm not sure if anyone else is, is present from that previous youth parliament. It's important to understand that you all are now a part of a fraternity. And even though perhaps you may not be a part of the youth parliament anymore, those past youth parliamentarians, I hope you all can form a bond as a part of a, a prestigious fraternity now and be supportive of each other. I would like to say as Minister of Youth and as the second youngest member of the House of Assembly, obviously, it gives me great pride to give remarks at the relaunching of the youth parliament. I lectured at H. Laverty Stout Community College for 12 years, where I taught my students research skills, the ability to construct logical arguments. I see actually some former students, uh, youth parliamentarians, so I'll see how well I, I, I taught them, to listen and read critically and to analyze and to respond to the arguments of others. You will use these skills in youth parliament as you confront issues which have great significance to our society. I take this opportunity to remind you that this year our House of Assembly makes 70 years, actually in November. As you assume your duties and conduct the affairs of your office, be ever mindful that there was a time when our people could not participate in that essential democratic process that should be the right of all human beings. In 1901, the United Kingdom stripped us of our house, and it was not until Theodore Faulkner, Calton de Castro, and Glani Fonseca, along with 1,500 persons, took to the streets in 1949, that we claimed for ourselves some measure of democracy with the restoration of our legislative council in 1950. Credit must also be given to Hope Stevens and the members of the Civic League who advocated for the return of the legislature in the previous decade. Therefore, youth parliamentarians, your training in the rules and procedures of the House of Assembly and in the art of debate is not for your own self-aggrandizement. And though it might even prepare you for a career in politics, the most significant task for which you are now responsible is to champion the cause of democracy in these lands. You are now at the vanguard of a movement to ensure that the basic tenets of freedom and equality and a right to representation can always find expression through the process of electing parliamentarians who act on behalf of a constituency. You are now leaders of a movement which says the voice 
of the people matters, and it must never be silenced. So learn your craft well. Carry with you the pride and dignity of your office, and inspire others, particularly young people, to continuously recognize our self-worth, our own self-value, our right to speak and to be heard. You parliamentarians, I thank you and congratulations on your new responsibilities. God bless you. Thank you for watching. 